everyone, Pastor Mark here with Harmony Toluca Lake, and welcome to another Our Story, the podcast episode of Short Stories. And I uh, am glad to have a conversation here with Donna Miller. Hi, how's it going? Uh, part of the here. Harmony Faith community. Yes, I am. Always a joy to be in conversation with you. Yes. Except today's conversation is a little bit more of a touchy subject and a hot topic because we do like to talk about relevant subjects, but this one really pushes the buttons. Uh, you because, could say that. Yes, because yeah, we're going to be talking about anti-trans legislation. And currently, uh, at, at this moment, we're looking at just over 600 bills have been introduced for legislation, which actually matches the entirety for 2023. And of the over 600 bills, that includes 43 states, Mm -hmm. That includes uh, 42 passed those bills. And then there's, I believe, right around 340-ish still active to be discussed within the legislatures. Mm -hmm. And what these bills do, uh, as I'm about to have this conversation with Donna, uh, for our own purposes of understanding, what these bills do is they are blocking trans people from getting uh, education. They are blocking them from receiving basic health care. They are blocking them from uh, actually recognition and even publicly existing. Mm -hmm. That was a conversation that you and I had earlier. So, uh, so Donna, just how is this impacting you and others in the trans community? Well, it's scary. I'm going to tell you that right away. It is terrifying. Once they decided that we were the wedge, the tip of the wedge that could divide America, they just went full force. And um, when these bills first started to be floated and things like that, there were there are, by the way, about four or five, maybe six very wealthy uh, donors and people that are funding this. Oh, you're talking it's, about just four or five major donors? Yeah, basically across uh, the United States and over and some in, in the, across the pond too. There are some people who have decided that this is the way they're going to get people to the polls. Mm. So they've decided to uh, find a very small yet vulnerable and misunderstood population that they can vilify. And boom, here we are. We've got... Uh, People writing bills about uh, health care and about legal issues that they have no reason to be uh, looking into this. Um, you know, all this stuff about medical care and sports and things like that and bathrooms. That was all well decided far, far in the past. Um, you know, we've in the U.S. and throughout the world, there's been a set of uh doctors and people who study this issue, um, who are well learned in this topic. And they set a, a council up called the WPATH, which is the World um, Physicians uh, Council about Transgender Issues. And they developed a system about how people would be able to legally transition, about the kinds of health care that they would receive, and the steps that you would need to go through to get it, this was all done back in the 70s and 80s. Mm -hmm. Okay, maybe it was a bit draconian, but it was there and in place. And now with this sort of renewed or some would say for the first time, people are just now f finding out about trans people. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure why that is because we've been around forever. But um, when they decided to uh, concentrate on the trans community, then they just started to throw things at the wall and see what would stick. Mm. And so what you're seeing now is the results of those things. Um, well, isn't there a pediatric association saying uh, things against the trans community? Yeah, there is a group that they try to hold up as the authority, but it, in truth, it's not the real American Pediatrics Association. It's, uh -huh. it's a... Uh, it's a right-wing group that um, has only a handful of doctors compared to the thousands of doctors that are in the the major one. The name escapes me at the moment, but uh -huh. we'll right. But in. so they're they are trying to force this issue out. It's almost like this. This is tying into the conversation I recently had with Rev Jefferson about mm -hmm. Christian nationalism. Yes, 
Yeah. Do you see this happening as almost a Christian nationalist type of situation? Yeah, I would say so. Um, you know, there are definitely ties to the patriarchy, to um, classism, to racism. Um, it definitely nods to the white, cis, hetero patriarchy culture. Mm -hmm. um, and really, all of these laws, they may say it's about protecting children or protecting women or uh, fairness or any of this stuff, when in fact, it's it's none of those things. It's simply a means to other to divide our population and stir up trouble to distract and basically just as an excuse to mm -hmm. um, funnel the hatred and the outrage. Well, there's certainly ramifications because of these bills, even though they haven't even passed. Uh, do you feel the effects? I feel in some ways very safe because I know that I can still day to day go about my life relatively unscathed, but even out here in California, we have felt some effects. Um, sometimes you get a little bit of a delay in trying to fill your hormone prescription. Whereas mm -hmm. if you're in a red state or someplace like that, they might've outlawed the fact that um, physician's assistants can no longer prescribe mm -hmm. hormones, um, which was often the only way that people could get them. Um, a lot of trans people find themselves disadvantaged economically because, you know, with all this rhetoric and things like that, it's hard to find jobs. It's hard to um, just find a place to fit in regardless. You know, it's tough um, to be going about your life and then having the full weight of your state or national government coming down on you. It's scary. Yeah. Well, and also with the national government, there may be some legislation that passes that could actually have an effect across the country. True? That is true. Um, if they get their way and they get to, uh, you know, put this in front of the Supreme Court, or in fact, they might have already done it, <laughs> mm -hmm. um, you know, that's going to have ramifications that will be felt for decades. Um, it was already such a hard road to go through this very almost gatekeepy type of system previous uh, in the 80s, it was not very good at all. In the 90s, it got marginally better. In the aughts, it was starting to be like, okay, maybe we'll, maybe we'll see something. But the real glimpse at freedom for trans people started to come during the Obama administration when the ACA was passed, mm -hmm. the Affordable Care Act, which took away uh, restrictions for things like you know pre-existing conditions and um, access to health care, regardless of of your gender identity and things like that. So when we saw that happen, it was like, oh, we're finally going to get a taste of of less red tape. I almost said freedom, but I don't think that's exactly <laughs> right. But our lives were going to get ever so slightly easier. In fact, we had articles like on the cover of Time magazine, the transgender tipping point, if you remember that, mm -hmm. which was, I think, Laverne Cox was on the cover mm -hmm. of Time magazine. That was 2013 or something like this, when, the, when that magazine came out. And then, um, you know, then once we get a little bit of visibility, then, well, it's like the sore thumb that sticks out, <laughs> you know, then, um, then we become a target. So you, do you ever feel like a scapegoat? 100% all the time. Mm. Yeah. It's pretty difficult. Honestly, I, I, I can't watch the news. I can't daily keep up with the news anymore because it's just manifesting as an existential dread mm -hmm. for me. Uh, you know, if something really important happens, then I, someone will tell me. Unfortunately, that's how I'm going to find out because I can't watch the unending, almost fire hose of hateful rhetoric, legislation, um, and talking points. It's just baffling to me, you know, how could we ever become a debate? Like you can't debate the existence of mm. the color blue, for mm -hmm. example. Yeah. Um, these things just are just like people come in all varieties, as we know. Well, so let's just focus on a topic like uh, uh, the use of public restrooms. Right. So what's the issue why why is it is it just out of fear there is isn't an issue in fact because before any of this stuff started happening we were doing this 
you know, we already had, you know, processes in place. And when you get to a point in your transition that you feel comfortable enough to start using the correct restroom, then you, you do so, you know, and most of the time when people are in a bathroom, they're just there to, you know, take care of something and get out, right. wash their hands or use the facilities. And that's really all that's ever happened. In fact, if we're talking about trying to keep bathrooms safe for women or for children or anything like that, there was never any safety to be gained by segregating them. Mm -hmm. You know, if, if a man wanted to go into the bathroom and assault a woman, he's just going to do it. You know, it doesn't, he doesn't need to say, oh, I'm identifying as a, you know, like there's no reason mm -hmm. for them to adopt this protracted excuse yeah. as being a trans. Like there, no, and first of all, that's never happened. There's never been an instance of that actually happening. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, so more often than not, people now are feeling emboldened to challenge someone when they're in the restroom and they don't feel like they belong. And who's mm -hmm. been bearing the brunt of that? Mostly cisgender women who don't dress feminine enough, uh, masculine mm -hmm. presenting lesbian women, for example, mm -hmm. or maybe they have broad shoulders, but they're cisgender. There's people now who are getting transvestigated by, uh, wow people, overly concerned citizens, you know, um, you'll have men now going into the women's restroom because they'll follow someone in there, uh, saying, I've got a right to go protect my daughter who's in there already. Well, you are the one that's violating the space now. It's not the woman who, mm -hmm. who you somehow seemingly have a problem with. It's you. Mm -hmm. They are the people who are causing the uh, the disruption. So there's another legislative bill that uh, focuses on gender-affirming uh, health care. Mm. Uh, thoughts mm. about this? Well, again, you can easily knock this down by saying it's essentially a way to other, to ostracize, and to punish. Gender-affirming care, and I assume we're, but let's start with the, like, the, 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 the kids, right? Gender-affirming care for kids it really consists of calling them by the name they want to be known by, letting them wear the clothes, uh, letting them associate with the peer group that they feel more closely aligned with. Um, kids are not receiving surgery or home hormones or anything like that. That's not a part of gender affirming care at all. Mm -hmm. um, it does come into play when kids come to the age of around puberty. Um, but quite typically the child has already shown signs. They've already been in, you know, discussions with the doctor, with the therapist, with the parents. Um, you know, so these drugs are safe. They've been in use for 50 years now. They were first used for, uh, you know, cisgender teens who were going through precocious puberty, which is something where like, you know, if a young boy or girl starts puberty at nine years old, well, that's too early. And it's, mm -hmm. and they, and so they, that's what these drugs are able to do is to hold off puberty until it's the right time. And in the case of a trans kid, it could save their life because mm -hmm. it give them enough time to figure out what they really want, you know, under careful consideration with a therapist, with their family, with the doctor. Yeah. Well, and, and as you know, I recently uh, shared a sermon, a message on demonizing, and mm. the trans community gets demonized. Quite often. And we were talking, I, I spoke about uh, the, the horror of loss of life. Yeah. Uh, and, and these bills actually, even though they may not even pass, are having an effect on uh, youth as a young adults, it's suicide. Uh, yes, and and uh, also cutting, mm -hmm. harming of self. Yeah, it can manifest in many ways, not just uh, cutting and things like that. But um, for example, you can self harm by going on social media and reading all of the hate filled comments. Mm -hmm. All right, so we've we've covered a variety of uh, topics here, and I I know we're running out of time. Yeah, there's uh, a lot to talk about. Yeah, there I wish is. <laughs> Uh, what guidance would you give to us in regards to this particular issue? Oh, 
Well, I mean, I think one of the main things is to consider the source of the messaging because uh, it's one thing if you hear trans people saying, we don't have enough rights, you know. Mm. But if you hear some group saying trans people have too many rights, which statement, you mm -hmm. know, it's that should be an indicator, you know. And one of the main things I would say is to keep an open mind and, and listen with your heart. You know, people are trans people are not trying to disrupt society or harm anyone or indoctrinate mm -hmm. anyone. Um, there's no way to make someone trans. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, in fact, seeing a trans person represented in media or in everyday life would be affirming for that for that tr trans person who hasn't come out of the closet yet, or maybe they're young. And, um, you know, these are the kinds of things that would improve trans people's lives, mm -hmm. not controlling laws that seek to curtail our freedoms and, and our very right to exist. Well, and the other thing, too, is, is I think it's extremely important to be in connection with uh, communication, talking with mm. those in the trans community. Yes, uh, definitely. Instead of dictating from upon high, this this you shall do, like yeah. the Ten Commandments. <laughs> uh, exactly. Trans people are real. We have real feelings. There's a reason we are like this. Um, you know, a lot of stuff is still coming to light about that. But um, it is definitely not something that's made up or a contrivance just yeah. to get outrage. Um, and if you're going to have a debate about us, you can't do it without us. Mm -hmm. Yeah, We need a seat at the table, too. We need to be listened to. And, uh, you know, yeah, if you just listen to us like regular people, then I think we could work it all out. Yeah. Well, Donna, you, uh, you are a blessing for the Harmony Faith community and uh, those in the trans community as well, uh, as uh, we are an affirming faith community. Yes, we are. And all means... All. That's right. Uh, and so we also want to extend our thanks to all of you uh, listening to the Our Story, the podcast, short stories episode. And again, a great honor to be able to be in conversation with Donna Miller. Thank you. Uh, and hopefully have continued conversations as well. And thank you for listening, downloading, sharing these episodes. And if you have a relevant topic that you would like us to address uh, in a future conversation, please send me suggestions. I would love those to mark, M-A-R-K, at hollywoodumc.org. Well, in the meantime, enjoy this day and peace. Peace.